Arizona is caught for a touchdown by Braylon Edwards. Navarre gives it to Perry up the middle. He's got a hole on the quick hitter. He bursts through down close to the 20-yard line. And that is a first down, and it puts Chris Perry over 200 yards rushing in 45 carries. Smoker in the gun. Three-man rush. He's got time. Stepping up, he's going to heave it deep. Left sideline. They're going to throw it up for grabs to Alexander. It is intercepted in the end zone. Ball game. Coming up on Michigan Replay, the Wolverines are victors valiant in East Lansing as they stop the Spartans. We'll have the highlight. We'll also meet a group of high flyers known as the crew. And we'll discuss the Wolverines' plans for the bye week. All that and more coming up next. Michigan Replay with Lloyd Carr is brought to you in part by Abso Pure Water, delivering quality bottled water since 1908. By Fifth Third Bank, working hard to be the only bank you'll ever need. And by State Farm, providing insurance and financial services. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Michigan Replay. Well, what a football game in East Lansing on Saturday, 27-20. Michigan gets the victory over the Spartans. Coach Carr, congratulations. It's Thank a, you, Jim. It's a tough place to play. It's even tougher uh, when you're a Michigan Wolverine and uh, you came out of there with a great victory. Well, it's not a tough place to play, but it's a tough place to win. <laughs> you know? That's a true. That's a good statement. I mean, I mean it, it is. Uh, that crowd is, uh, they're into it. The intensity, they always uh, inspire the uh, the, the Michigan State teams. Well, the thing that you obviously had was a game plan to run the football. Old time football. I know you loved I it. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Perry carries 51 times over 200 yards rushing. That had to be the thought going in, right? You know, Jim, we went in not knowing how they were going to defense us. They had uh, the bye week, so they had a lot of preparation time. Uh, we went in with the idea that we were going to be able to throw the football if that's what was dictated. But uh, the, the, the run uh, was there, and we took it. Boy, you sure did. Let's take a look at the highlights. We go to the first quarter. Nothing much happening in the first quarter, except your defense continues to play. Our defense was outstanding. Here's a, a screen that's a very difficult play. And Lawrence Reed, who continues to play well, made a, a great tackle there. And uh, we, we came out. Michigan State had been a very st fast starting team. We stopped them. Uh, and but we had poor field position throughout the first quarter here late in the quarter uh, we get a drive going and John uh, under behind outstanding protection Jim we had one sack in this game Michigan State went in leading the nation in sacks and uh, that was a big difference in the game as well and this is your touchdown drive it started in the end of the first quarter and goes to the second quarter and that's kind of what you did Pounded the ball of Chris Perry between the tackles. Well, we blocked uh, very, very well the run block. Here is second nine. Terry Malone, I thought, made a great call. Uh, normally second nine from the nine, that's a passing down, but uh, uh, we hit the uh, inside zone and uh, got the touchdown here on third down and took the lead. And, and that's, of course, in a rivalry game and on the road. If you can take the lead, it really is a big uh, boost to your team. At 7 nothing, and then their next possession, they come back and answer. But the key is the defense, even though you let them down into the red zone on a nice pass here, uh, the defense still hangs tough and keeps them from getting the touchdown. Well, here's a big play on third down, and uh, 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 Willis Berenger makes a, a wonderful hit there. The one thing we did a good job of, Jim, is tackling and not uh, allowing many runs after the catch, which is important in uh, uh, defensive football from the standpoint of hitting the receivers, and hopefully that will cause some drops as the game goes on. Well, it's 7-3 at this point, and then your defense comes up again. I want to play by Grant Bowman here. Well, I don't know how Grant Bowman even played in this game. He didn't practice Tuesday, Wednesday. He had a badly sprained ankle, but, uh, you know, he's got a lot of courage, and he, uh, as a captain, uh, wanted to play, he spent a lot of time getting ready, and he did, and, uh, fortunately for us. Right before the half, this is a huge drive here, and uh, it gets momentum for you. And again, it starts on the ground, and then you go up top. Great throw, great catch here from John Navarro to Braylon Edwards. Well, on this drive, I thought uh, Terry mixed in the draw play, and 
uh, here. Good protection again, and Braylon uh, runs out of the cut, finds the ball, and uh, well executed play. And we missed the extra point, but uh, we're going into the half at 13 3. 13 3 with your running game going the way it had gone. You had time of possession in your favor the first half. You had to feel comfortable to a point going into the locker room and half. Well, the one thing we, we felt very good about was the fact that we had control of the time of possession. Jim, we had the ball uh, 19 minutes in the first half to their 11. Anytime you're doing that, you're wearing a team down. And, uh, and we had one turnover, but other than that, uh, we'd done okay there. Well, it sure did uh, look good in the second half as the Wolverines came back. We'll be back and have the second half highlights. Before we do that, we hear from Dave Pearson, who said the O-line is the key to winning. Obviously, uh, you know, Michigan State had a high, high-powered offense, so we wanted to really control the clock. And, uh, you know, just getting that running game going, I think, was huge for us. You know, we felt like we'd get five, six, seven, eight yards anytime we wanted to. And uh, I think that was just, you know, that's huge for us. Is Michigan. If it's maize and blue and says Michigan, you'll find it at the M Den. Whether toddler or grandparent, the perfect Go Blue gift ideas can be found at all M Den locations, including Briarwood Mall, Ann Arbor, Laurel Park Place, Livonia, and 12 Oaks Mall, Novi. For the free Michigan Athletic Department catalog, call us at 1 800 462 5836 or online at www.mgoblue.com. Live the tradition at the M Den. Now, the Les Stanford Chevrolet Locker Room Report. Well, we just come in and just try to play, play ball, get pressure on the quarterback, you know, make good picks on the ball, you know, have fun out there. Just try to stop, just try to stop their offense because they spread the ball around real nice. And we, you know, they're a great, they're a great offensive team. And our goal is just to come in and stop them. We have the chance. <laughs> Willis, Willis is kind of excited after that no, game, huh? Yeah, but he's an emotional guy. In the last three or four games, Jim, uh, Willis Behringer stepped in there when uh, Marlon's been out, and he's done one heck of a job. A young kid, and it's great to see that. Well, when we uh, go to the second half highlights, talk about this a little bit. They get the ball first in the second half. Uh, nothing happens, and then they start to move the ball a little on you, but the defense on a short yardage play, Stops him and you get the ball back. Carl Diggs uh, is having a wonderful year, made a big play there uh, to force the punt. And then uh, on fourth down here, they, get, uh, they tried a um, fake punt, Jim, that, uh, you know, they tried an unorthodox. Well, they rolled uh, to the right. Yes, and then much they went... like one of the uh, things we did early <laughs> in the season, didn't right. work very well. But um, Pierre Woods. And uh, Pat Massey just made an unbelievable play in stopping the fake punt. And then we take over with great field position. And here is the play. Touchdown to Minnery. Naked boot off of fake. Later on, that comes back to haunt you. But it could have been the th same thing if they weren't in the perfect defense. Well, right? Jim, there's a perfect case where the run really set up the pass. And Andy got open. And uh, John made a good throw. And uh, then we come back and... One of the few times this year we've given up a big touchdown pass. We missed uh, a coverage call from the sideline. We should have had two guys deep, but we only had one. And, uh, you know, the momentum now has shifted back because uh, they get a quick touchdown. But, and this is what I thought was important for the entire game on Saturday, every time they scored, the crowd was in it, but you quieted them with first downs and a long drive. Here's an interference call on Michigan State that gets you another first down? Well, he hit Braylon there. We had a p holding penalty and overcame a holding penalty, which normally you don't do. Braylon made a good catch there. And then John, uh, finding his secondary receiver there, makes a great throw. And uh, here on the sweep, uh, Chris uh, running with uh, great power. And, uh, you know, this guy had uh, a pretty good day. Yeah, the game of his life. 51 carries, and then this is a great throw and catch here. Well, this is third down. I'm ready to send in the field goal team, but John threw it only where uh, the defender couldn't get it and, and, and into double coverage there, and Braylon, great concentration. Uh, that was a big play. 27-10 at this point. Last thing you can have happen is a big return, uh, this, and you miss some tackles. Yeah, we miss tackles here, and this Cobb is really fast. There's two missed tackles. How about the play by Carl Tabb? Carl Tabb saved the day here because uh, 
He comes over uh, as a safety on our kickoff team, and Carl's done a great job on our uh, special teams all year long. Then they hit Shabai over the middle, and they're moving the ball a little bit. But again, your defense does not allow them in the end zone. We, we kept them out of the end zone here. Uh, Lawrence Reed makes a great play. Normally, that's a technique in coverage that only cornerbacks use. But because of the no back set, Lawrence was spread out to the field. We knew they were going to go deep to him sooner or later. And Lawrence Reed made a wonderful play. And we hold him to a field goal. And of course, uh, they make it at that point 27 to 13. But you continue to move the football on the ground. This is before the play late causes your problem. but. This stuff is textbook. Well, we're still throwing the football. Uh, uh, Steve Breston makes a wonderful catch there on the sideline to keep the drive alive. And we're uh, in a position to uh, make a big play here, but they make a big play. And uh, now the momentum has really changed. The stadium, the crowd is uh, into the game. And on the ensuing kickoff, Jim, uh, we mishandle the kick and get very poor field position. As you see down here on the 14-yard line, John makes a great throw to Braylon. Uh, Braylon gets up the field, and the one thing you, wa you want to do is use as much clock as you can. And here's a play that doesn't get anything, but Michigan State gets a penalty for unnecessary roughness, and it's a play in the middle. Watch Dave Pearson's helmet. Well, his helmet comes off here. And it was, there's no question, it's a costly penalty. He had had his helmet uh, taken off once earlier, and he had told the official, and fortunately he saw it here. And uh, then we uh, go back here on uh, uh, defense. And this is the Hail Mary late in the game. This is their only chance, and Scott McClintock comes up with a pick. Unbelievable athlete. Uh, to put Scott McClintock back as one of your deep guys there. He's a, he's, uh, you've ever seen him uh, play center field. We have some. What uh, is a linebacker we, doing back there? That's the question. <laughs> Tell me about that. Well, you know, I didn't know until after the game that he had intercepted it. Oh, but, is that right? But I did know that he was uh, back there and, and he made a great play because, Jim, as we all know, when that ball goes up, it's like swinging the bat. You swing the bat, you got a chance to hit a home run. Well, we've and that seen that was a dangerous that, play. Yes. Yeah, we've seen that happen before. Colorado heart, comes to mind. My heart was in my throat. Well, what is Scott McClinton going back there for? Is it just because he's a great athlete and he has the ability to see the ball and make plays like that? Well, he is a great athlete, and uh, you know, I think our coaches recognize uh, his abilities, and uh, they've got they had him in the right place. Talk about Chris Perry. Well, and did you ever think you'd have a bag where you give it to him 51 times? That beats the record by nine. Jim, uh, I think when you look at, when I look at Chris Perry, what I love is the fact that this kid uh, is not only a great football player when he has the ball. He runs with great power and leverage. He comes out the other end. He gets a tough yardage. But he is an outstanding receiver, as he proved in the Minnesota game. And he is a devastating pass protector. He is a complete football player. He reminds you a little Anthony Thomas, because Thomas was one of the best pass protecting backs I've ever seen. Well, Chris Perry is a great football player, make no mistake. A great win, too, coming out of that. Game was Big Ten title implications? Well, I think it was a, it was a total team victory. You know, we, you can't run the football like that if you don't have great uh, uh, blocking up front. Uh, we had great uh, uh, percentage on third down conversions, which allowed us to use the clock. Jim, we had the football almost 40 minutes wow. in the game. That uh, really tells the tale. That does tell the tale indeed. Uh, don't go away, everybody. When we come back, we'll meet the crew. But first, we hear from Chris Perry, who says all that credit should be spread around a bit. You know, that's a, that's a great offensive line. Coach Malone, all the coaches on the offensive staff, staff you know, um, seeing the weaknesses in the defense and doing a great job uh, scheming for the game. And the offensive line did a great job, receivers did a great job, and John did a great job checking to the right plays. Michigan is blessed with a very deep receiving core. Besides veterans Butler, Bell, Edwards, and Gonzalez, there are three sophomores that have made a great impact on the offense. The youngsters are Jason A. Vant, Steve Breston, and Carl Tapp. And while these receivers call themselves the crew, 
They could just as easily call themselves the Musketeers because their game is all for one and one for all. On the field, we definitely have to be a close group. Um, all of our plays require each one of us to do our own particular job, and without that one job, the play doesn't work. And you know, as much as we like to believe that you know, we are you know, individuals, it, it shows up when the play doesn't work, when one of us makes a mistake, just how important, your, you know, as we call it, your partner is. You basically feed off one another. I mean, when someone else is, uh, you, know, you know, may uh, do something wrong, but, you know, we're there to pick them up, you know. That's how things is uh, when it comes to the crew. Running your route the best you can, um, going out there, being a physical force on the field, because that's um, the things that, that we have to do to get on the field is blocking them. Um, do all the things that's necessary to go out there and win the game, and, it's, and, it, and it forms a tight group because when one of the crew members or like anybody scores, the whole crew scores because one of the guys wouldn't have got the ball if the other guy wouldn't run in the correct route, you know, to get him open. So it's a whole team effort in every part of the, every part of the game, whether it's blocking or whatever for receiving. While these guys get a lot of attention for catching the ball, that's only part of their game. In order to play, they also must block. And the youngsters like the idea of getting physical. The only time I really get, get to go out there and hit somebody is, um, is um, doing blocking. I, I get tired of taking all the hits. I need to hit somebody sometime. I like that part of the game. You know, I'm small, but uh, I like it. I mean, it's football. And it's, it's a physical sport. I mean, I just, uh, I just try to go out there. I, I do my best at blocking, and just like everything else. I mean. And what I want to be like, uh, like what Jason does every play, he just goes out there, you know, throws his body out every play. And I mean, he, he does he does great things blocking and also receiving. I mean, I look at him, I try to go out and uh, imitate him when, when it comes to blocking and stuff like that. Uh, for us, in particular, it's, it's just being a complete player. And in order to be a complete player, you have to be able to block, and you have to be able to catch, you got to be able to run great routes, you got to, you know, get off the line. It's just so many things that you have to do. But, you know, we're just striving to be complete players because we're always going for, towards being a you know great receiver. They are a tight group, and that means they kid around with each other. They keep themselves humble, like when Preston was tackled on a punt return against Notre Dame by the kicker. Yes, that was a topic of discussion. I got the needle from everybody the Notre Dame week about the kicker slowing me down. They say, everybody says the kicker tackled me, but I didn't really see it that way. But uh, yeah, I did get the needle for that one. We didn't get on them. We we kind of we kind of joked around about it, but you know, like I told Steve, then it's not often that you'll find a kicker that can run like that. And and I mean, for him to get caught by a kicker, yeah, we can sit and joke and say you you got caught by a kicker, you must be slow and all this other stuff. But we know that's not true. We were just joking around with him, giving him a hard time. <laughs> you know, if they didn't give each other a hard time, they wouldn't be teammates, would they? Jim, that's an unbelievable group of kids right there. Three. Well, and the thing I like about them, and I know the thing you like about them too, is it's about the blocking part, yeah. they, they take great pride in that because that's part of being a team game where you let Chris Perry make a big play because you got to block. Well, they're all coachable, they're all smart, and they're all competitive, and uh, of course, they all have good ability. And the interesting thing is, we didn't even include Braylon in that, or, or Jermaine Gonzalez, or, or some of these other guys that can, that can play too. Well, you know, I think the, the, the message there is that we've got a lot of depth, we rotate a lot of guys in there, and, um, you know, that's, that's what makes a team. All those guys are on special teams uh, that are doing a great job as well as blocking. Uh, you know, they're not just guys that play with the football. And when you get people that are willing to play when somebody else is getting the football, you got a chance. All right, when we come back, we will uh, talk about the bye week and uh, discuss what Coach Carr's plans are with his Wolverines. But first, we hear from Grant Bowman, who says the Wolverines are right where they want to be. That's the biggest deal. I mean, it's. I mean, we're in the race for the Big Ten. We control our own fate, and uh, it's all about what we do now. I mean, we've got to control our own destiny, and uh, man, it's so exciting being in. There's nothing like being in a championship run in November. It feels nothing like it. You know, nothing like it. It's awesome. Locker room report. We got the bye week coming up. We're gonna rest, get, get off our feet, and relax, and then. Uh, Going into Northwestern, we just got to make sure we take care of business. Saw that Northwestern beat uh, Wisconsin a couple weeks ago, so we know we're not, we know they're not just going to give up on us. Uh, before the Wolverines get Northwestern, uh, they do have a week off, and uh, 
Does it come at the right time? You know, this is always the same <laughs> question we ask every year. Does it come at the right time for you or doesn't it? Well, Jim, I think the, the measuring stick there is how you play after the bye. And, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of teams in this conference, including us, that have not played particularly well coming off a of bye week. I think you get out of a rhythm, you get out of a routine. It does help you from the standpoint of getting healthy, and uh, it gives you some more time to prepare. Uh, are you dinged up enough so that you kind of like to have two weeks to get some guys healed? Well, I think uh, the one thing I would say, you know, I, I would, I think I would rather play, except that with a solid.